Great morning, good morning, good morning. Come on in. It is the final day of Family First Conference. Um, good morning, Pastor. Good morning. How are you? Come on, jeans. Come on, shoes. You know, little jeans. Come on, I, You know what? I didn't realize for our streaming audience and for those of you who don't know, the rodeo is really big in Texas. Ah. So rodeo season starts tomorrow. Okay. So you're repping early? Is that is that? And what happens is the Friday before the rodeo is Go Texas Day. Okay. So I got on my Go Texas outfit today. I got I got my boots because you're supposed to wear boots. Now, you know, I'm sure they want you to wear cowboy boots. But yeah. Yeah, you know, you, you're a stylish rodeo. You're not. Yeah. So I was like, I, I'm in sync with Go Texas Day. You're looking sharp. You're thank looking you. Sharp. Thank you, you. you. Like, you know, the rodeo is huge here. Mm. Like, it's a huge carnival. Wow. You know, animals, concerts. You participate in it? I've been to I've been to a concert before at the rodeo. Okay. I've been to okay. the carnival. You got to go to the carnival. Uh -huh. You're going to see everything fried that you hadn't seen fried before. Fried Oreos, fried, you know. Wow. Everything is fried. So have you ever rode a horse? Have I ever rode a horse? I did not. I have not. You know, we used to have horses. We used okay. to have horses and cows. Okay. I knew about um, the cows. And the cows. Yeah. And um, I've never rode a horse Years ago, I was going to do a horse-drawn carriage for something, and I got in the carriage and started sneezing because my dad was like, test it out before uh -huh. we get this, this horse-drawn carriage. And we went downtown to do it, and I had an allergic reaction, so oh, no, I have not rode a horse. Oh, God. Yeah. Yeah, but, but like today, for the people that are here, you actually may see trail riders coming into Houston. Like it's a whole, wow. it's a thing. Like wow. people trail ride from all over to come to the rodeo and the parade. And they have like, like old school trail ride, like uh -huh. caravans. But I mean, they've elevated it. But you're going to see, you can see horses and all that. Got to be from Houston. We have Mardi Gras in Mobile. We don't have. I know y'all have Mardi yeah, Gras. Yeah, you know, yeah, so yeah. so this is this is Go Texan time. Okay. Welcome to everybody. Welcome. That's I know y'all are. You know the people here. We put a little cafe in the lobby, and so I think our lo our local people are 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 moving and progressing in. But how have you been blessed by this week? I've been a, man. Let me tell you this this togetherness piece. Yeah. And him, he, uh, Pop's talking about the dynamics of the mind. Yeah. And, and how we need to go to that place and transform that place and renew our mind so that we can see this togetherness that we desire. It has been so transformative. And last night to challenge us to get back teaching and walking in faith yeah. was absolutely amazing. You know, it just, it, it woke something back up in us like, okay, we had it all the time. What did we do to put it aside and focus on something else and we need to get back to that that was working. Absolutely. I thought it was amazing, yeah. So good, you know, uh, most of the teaching really has been about, you think togetherness, he's gonna talk about everybody else because a lot of times right. when we're talking about togetherness, we want to point the finger at everybody. Yeah, get on my but, wife. Yeah, but you yeah, gotta get yeah. you together you gotta first. You, right. And then when you get you together, God can bring you in the company mm -hmm. of the right people mm -hmm. and you can manage those relationships. But togetherness really starts with you and Absolutely. how you process information. Well, you know, we listen like that, right? Yeah. We, 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 we have dialogue, we talk, we have disagreements, but we're actually sometimes listening to answer yeah. and not really listening so we can hear to figure out, is it me? Right. You know, and so uh, I, I got gut punched a couple of times, one or two times. One or two times. But it's all well, good, because now you're ready to go. And I love how it's at the top of the year. And of course, uh, February is love month. And so yeah. what an investment into family to get your family together. And if you don't have mental toughness for success, make sure that you get that. Absolutely. And then those that building self-esteem kit, uh, you want to make sure that you register so that you can access that. And then we still have another Q&A session on today. So you want to make sure that you get your questions in. In. Yeah. Uh, our team will help me and put it on the screen how they can submit their questions uh -huh. for later on and uh, we are excited we're always grateful here at the light for everybody that comes to Houston and is in in the house yeah. uh, but can we share on streaming and Absolutely. make sure that we get the numbers up I'm excited about part three it's it's me been too. information like it's just been coming yeah. and coming and coming if you have a question today you can go to newlight.org/f 
F F Q. Q. And uh, yep. when we're doing the Q and A, especially for our senior pastors and their families, mm -hmm. you'll be able to hear your question answered. So it's going to be an exciting day here. It's you know, I, I want to say thank you all for for loaning. You've done it for many years, but for for you guys loaning your your mom and dad, pastors, mentors, proteges, all of that to us, and then allowing us to take a peek inside of what your life looks like to be with them and what it's like to be children to uh, amazing trailblazers in the ministry. Thank you guys so much for that. And I'm quite sure everybody out here is saying the same thing, even those who are on live, uh, that it helps us out because um, you know we go back home, we have problems, we're pastors, we're ministers, we have children. And just to know that we can make it and, and that we can solve problems and stay together and, and have issues and still stay together, it is so powerful. So I know you've heard it before, but, but thank you so much for for it's loaning it's your parents to us. You know, when you're, when, and, and a pot, dad says this all the time, that when God blesses you, he has more than you in mind. Mm -hmm. And it would be, I, I think it's almost criminal for you to experience the blessings of yeah. God, experience God's power working in your life and you not share it with others. And what I love about dad is that he's willing to give the how-tos. Right. And so you can see it on display, but you get the how-tos as well. And so uh, it's like we have this just big, huge family across uh, the state. And of course, you know, one of the things I love about our our family, our AIM family, the pastors that are connected is because we grew up with all girls. Ah. So then now we've got brothers. And uh -huh. so, uh -huh. you know, it's an adjustment now to have okay. brothers, but it's it's such a wonderful thing to, to be able to co be connected. And of course, we appreciate you all as well for honoring our I pastor. got a PK question. I just, I just, I felt like a PK want to ask this. What? Was it always like that? Were you always open to and inviting to having to share your space with other people who were calling Dr. Bridget mom, apostle, or, or at that time, Dr. Hill, your dad, and you like, that's my dad, that's my mama. How you, was, was it always cool? It, tell, tell that's the a truth. good question. You in hey, church, I you like, in church. I, I got, you know what, I, I think as a, as a PK, you go through the stage of it not being cool, just okay. period, to be a PK. Okay. And I mean, everybody doesn't have that story, but you know, I remember in high school, uh, some of the guys in high school came by my house and they were they were in, like they lived a couple streets over and I was like y'all do not come by the house and so they came by the house and they were like it was like Jesus came out it was like Irisha cannot have company and so every joke was always church related and then I think one of them ended up seeing like the the dining room table and it was like they got the Lord's Supper table in the house so you know all the jokes when I was in high school would be surrounded around like okay. church Okay, okay. But I, I also feel like it's, we've always had people around. Okay. You know, uh, I don't know. Y'all probably don't. I don't know if Apostle or them have ever told y'all. When we were growing up, people used to just live with us. Oh, really? <laughs> wow. She's shaking her head. Everybody, we had a whole family live with us one time because, you know, church was smaller at that time. So everybody was connected and the people's house burned down and the whole family. How many of them was it, mom? Five. Well, you got a Marriott Hotel. But they were hotel all like, the they, they weren't like small. They were all like. Um, like the sons played football, they were six feet tall, so a whole family living with us. So we were, I mean, so when, when it got to this stage, right. we're used to people okay. being around. Okay. I mean, okay. you know, I don't even know how they had the, the, you know, we used to have this Caucasian guy live with us for a little bit. And I don't know how he came around, but he lived with us for a little bit. And then he got mad because I was telling the, my, my friends at school he was our butler and he just, Oh God! <laughs> so, so I said that to say we've always had people around. Is it an adjustment to hear a lot of people call them mom and dad and pop? Yeah. Mm -hmm. But what I know is that access that we always have, and there are times that we will say, "Now we are big on that," and they'll tell you there are t there are moments that we're like, "This is a non-negotiable." That's good. This is this is our time. Yeah. Nobody gets yeah. this time but us. And I think you should have some of those non-negotiables mm -hmm. that, yeah, you we we don't mind you doing all that, but when we have just 
just to heal your crew, it's, it's a non-negotiable. And if we have somebody else come in, it's, it's a conversation. Got and it's it. not just like somebody gets to infringe yeah. on some personal moments and personal time. Keeping yeah. the togetherness. Yeah, keeping yeah. the togetherness. Awesome. But yeah, so we've, we've been, we've had people around since I can remember. <laughs> I, have, I have a couple horror stories and tra traumatic experiences. Crochet outfits weren't popular, but we had this lady live with us. And she made me a whole crochet outfit, and mommy made me wear it to school. Jesus. You remember that crochet outfit? <laughs> it was a vest and a skirt. It was yellow with a multicolor in the back. See, now crochet yeah. is popular. It wasn't popular then. Nah, don't, she made don't me say wear that. it to don't school. And I think she made me wear it on picture day. <laughs> Jesus. It wasn't picture day, but you didn't make me wear it to school. <laughs> no, my wife is crocheting, and she's something, you know, she told me she's going to make me a suit. I'm like, the devil is a lie. <laughs> wearing no crochet suit. Oh, what do your members say she's going to make you a crochet suit? My wife. Oh, your wife? She likes to crochet. She likes to crochet. Ah, oh, I didn't know that. It's a thing now. Even nah, first we thing, your mama doesn't. I Did asked you? the Lord, let her, let her hands not cross each other right. <laughs> Well, don't traumatize them because I still, when I look at crochet outfits in the store, I'll be like, I can't, I can't, I can't, I can't, I can't. Because um, mommy made me wear that. So, yes, right. we are so used we, to yeah. people being around. Gotcha. We're gotcha. excited about uh, today an apostle ministering to you. And, of course, this is the transparency that happens at Family First. Yeah. So we go through things and we have experiences just like any other family. Uh, but we are grateful to put that on display for you. Why don't you check this out? And we've got a treat for you this morning. Like we talked to the single, the unmarried state yesterday. We're going to talk about married togetherness this morning, but check out these uh, spots and then we'll be right back. Hello, Dr. I here with this message and personal invitation to join me and my team for the upcoming free virtual uptick conference, March 30th at 7 p.m. that is focused on revitalizing youth ministries in the local church. As you know, for years, I hosted the largest urban youth conference in America for 17 years and was most successful in seeing the lives of young people changed by the thousands. I'm now the senior pastor of New Light Church and we are part partnering with Apostle Hilliard in the Love City USA vision of life-changing summer camps this June and July. The virtual uptick conference March 30th at 7 p.m. Central Standard Time will be inspirational, instructional, and impactful as Apostle and I have assembled a knowledgeable team to help you revitalize your youth and team ministry leadership. Most youth ministries across America are rebounding from the pandemic layoff and having a proven strategy will accelerate the process. Join me or have your team join in this one day virtual uptick youth leadership conference March 30th 7 p.m. Central Standard Time the registration is absolutely free but registration is essential text uptick 23 to 54244 complete the form and the special exclusive uptick conference link will be sent to you you must register to be included and to receive the free resources to help you build a youth or team ministry that complements your church's vision, pleases God, and transforms lives. There will be an opportunity for the registration discounts to the extraordinary 2023 summer camp sessions. Help me get the word out to other youth leaders about this amazing virtual uptick youth leadership conference. The registration is absolutely free, but registration is required. So register today. Text uptick23 to 54244. Thank you for caring enough to help instill a God consciousness in future generations. The promise of kingdom wealth cannot be disputed and it, like all other promises of God, are received by faith. I'm here in my collector's room uh, with the artifacts from all over the world as a testament of a marvelous life of faith. How thrilled I am to host the upcoming 2023 Spring Virtual Faith Experience entitled Wealth Building Faith, March the 23rd at 7 p.m. Central. I'll be sharing both the spiritual and practical strategies of kingdom wealth building in this dynamic one night explosive faith teaching. 
what will amaze you is that you'll see in the scriptures that many of the patriarchs of faith were wealthy men and women. Of course, you know, we are blessed to be a blessing sowing into the good works to the glory of God. Now, general registration for this wealth building faith experience, March the 23rd is free, but there's a VIP registration of only $97 that will enhance the experience with up close access and resources. Now, go to uh, the landing page for the Spring Faith Experience and you have more information. Text TFE, there it is on the screen, WBF, uh, to 54244. 54244. Now, this virtual faith teaching, March the 23rd at 7 p.m. Central, you know, it's going to be an experience like none other. And you need to register, do it today. It's going to amaze you what you're going to learn about using your faith for increase. We slashed the price. It's time for you to reserve your spot for your teen group for June and July summer camps at Love City in Houston. Listen, we have slashed the price for our four day summer camp from $2.99 to just $1.99 per camper, making it possible for more teens to attend. Love City USA is in the shadows of downtown Houston and it is a place full of fun, fellowship and faith with first class air conditioned dormitories, a cafeteria and state of the art worship facilities. Teen groups are coming from across America to experience this amazing teen sensitive spiritual encounter and we would love to host your group. For more information, text LCUSA23 to 71441 or you can go to lovecityusa.com. Treat your team to an experience that will last them a lifetime. Go Love City. Well, you want to make sure that you're a part of the various events, the two uptick and uh, the faith tour. They're both virtual, but make sure that you register. Make sure you have your youth leaders registered. And then, of course, I want to encourage you to have your teens to be a part of the summer camp this summer. Uh, it is something that our team, our entire staff, we take on the responsibility along with volunteers. And we've got three exciting weeks of camp this year um, and don't wait till the last minute want to make sure that you go ahead and register it really is an experience and encou encounter I was telling Apostle uh, some of the teens from uh, one of the teens from uh, this past camp I still keep up with or follow her it's just a connection uh, that many many teenagers made with each other but also some of them made connections with just staying on the right path she was headed to college so I started following her on Instagram. She was just one of the ones that was like, oh, you're going you gonna to like me and I'm going to be around you whether you like it or not. And I have really uh, just will talk every now and then. I'll check on on Instagram. But it's really a, a place of deliverance, a place of change, and a place of an uh, encounter with God as well as connection with others. Well, this morning I've got two couples that uh, I believe they're going to bless you real good. I didn't do like Pastor Robinson did and have a whole intro, uh, but but uh, they're going to be a, a joy to interview this morning. We're going to talk about togetherness in the marriage state because you can be married and still not together. So can y'all give it up for Bishop William Murphy and Lady Pastor Danielle Murphy? It's a good day, huh? It's a good day. We got together today. <laughs> walk out she start walking so praise the lord come on we, it's a good day she, we together today we all together today <laughs> is that together because she followed your instructions <laughs> that's right <See? laughs> well, submit yourself praise saints. Oh, praise. God. Oh, oh jesus praise saints next up uh from jacksonville florida the whites give it up for dr Teresa and dr james white jacksonville's favorite couple ah what it do? I said I was going to crip walk out here, but y'all wasn't ready for that. No, I don't know. We, I didn't have no theme music for you to do that. 
Uh, thank y'all for hanging out with me for a few moments as we help people in their uh, married relationships. Uh, one thing as I was thinking about this moment is, first of all, how long have you all been married? We've been married for 23 years. It'll be 24 years in August. My goodness. Oh, I need a better hand clap than that. Yeah. Uh, listen, I need a 10 hand clap. <laughs> 23 years, millions didn't make it. But. This September will be 34 years for us. Oh Boom! my goodness. Yeah. Yay. Yeah. yeah. So that means you, you all met in a younger season. Absolutely. Indeed. And um, as you age, mm -hmm. you evolve. Yes. Absolutely. What you want in your 20s, you don't want in your 30s. Right. What you right. want in your 30s, you may not want in your 40s. Mm -hmm. What you want in your 40s, you may not want in your 50s. Right. How have you all evolved together with life changes, uh, even, you know, career changes, because, you know, you were just singing when y'all met, and then yep. now you're, I want to pass the church. So how have you managed your to, to stay together and really manage the evolution of each other over these years? So you want to go first? No, go, age before beauty. Indeed. Well, Ooh, well actually, boy. it's age watch and beauty. <laughs> Come on, tell before, us. Watch Don't they playboy. look good to be married 34 years? Yeah. That is crazy. crazy hold up, hold up. First, thank you Amazing. so much, Dr. I, thank for allowing us so to be a part. Us but us. I rebuke that. We don't look good to be married 34 years. We look good on real. Okay. Period. Okay. Yeah, exactly. I'll give you that. I'm Period. Here. I know some folks have been married 34 years. And, and they who, look like They it. look like Y'all yeah. like yeah. don't look like what you've been through. Shown up. Exactly. So that's kind of, I'll, I'll give you a quick summary. You're absolutely right. Our seasons have evolved with us. Absolutely. So when right. we met, we met in the military. We were both in the military. We wow. actually lost contact with each other. And she chased me down. Eh, that's debatable. So, but anyway, <laughs> so when we actually got back together, uh, we got back together, we got married. Most people don't, I think a lot of people don't really know our story, but we were overseas. <laughs> And we did, when we got overseas, we didn't like each other. And we were stuck in Sicily together. And so what ended up happening is we actually were trying to kill each other for life insurance money. We found that out after we, our marriage was reconciled. So, no, like, for real, like, it's not like an embellishment. Real? It's not oh, an yeah. embellishment. Oh, my. I, I, was, I worked in the hospital. I was trying to find a way to poison him. Mighty wow. God. And he... He was just a gangster. It, most people don't know his story. <laughs> I was, so I was sweet. kind, but was it was so sweet. but he was he had a gang. Like I couldn't go any place by myself. All of his gang members would take me wherever I was going. They wouldn't let me go anywhere alone. In Sicily? No, yeah. this was this oh, was this before he, we got oh, to okay, Sicily. Okay, before y'all got to Sicily. So, okay. so he still had this life, but then his gang members were still in Virginia and we in Sicily and all you know what broke loose. Okay. And so he still had gangster tendencies, so he was trying to take me skiing so that he could murder me at the volcano in Mount Etna. My Jesus, this, yeah. is, this, is, this is deeper than what I thought. Y'all getting the whole tea this morning. <laughs> this is not an embellishment. It is not an, I promise you it's not an embellishment. And so we got saved over there. He got saved over there and his life completely changed and then I got mad because he got saved. Even though I was a church girl my whole life, I got mad because he got saved and then I was trying to leave him. So I told him, I said, the only reason I'm not leaving you is because we're on this island and I don't have nowhere to go. But when we get back to America, I miss leaving you. So that was that season, I get saved, we get saved together and life changes for us. Yeah, so, so that was like the crazy season for us. So we know how to be in a position where you, I, I never thought I would love him again. And God had to help me. Because I was like, I don't think I can ever love this man again. And God changed me from not just disliking him, but hating him, to having him to be the best thing that ever happened in my life. Oh, that's so good. Yeah. That's good. So good. You want to add on to that? <laughs> 
<laughs> so, we need both sides of this story. <laughs> so, dur- dur- during that during that season, uh, I didn't I didn't dislike her. Neither did I fall out of love with her. I didn't know how to solve problems. So for me, solving problems was violence. So however, whoever won, wow. that's the way we go. So it. with it, us breaking up, that was cool. I still liked her and all that stuff there. I just couldn't get along with her and didn't know how to solve problems. I could fight a dude at the drop of a dime, but a girl, ah, really no match. Not, not being funny. I know some girls could go, but ah, whatever. So fighting her, that just wasn't attractive to me. And if we got divorced, she would take my kids. Thank it didn't wow. exist then where, you know, there was... Uh, attorneys for men and men could get custody. You had to show some real issues with her. We both in the military. In fact, my job was more dangerous and I was gone more, so I would have lost custody of my son. I'm not interested in, you know, I got to go through you and your man and all that. I'm not doing that. So the easiest thing for me, again, so violence was how I solved problems. So I take her to the mountain, snap her neck, push her down. The fall would bring other injuries, so I'm not going to jail, right? <laughs> so I get my kids, I cry at the funeral. Meditation is something I learned before because I would practice crying. Because her mom, of course, didn't like me, knew I, knew I was a hood rat, so it was clear she was gonna point the first finger at me. I gotta, you know, I gotta win her over so my cry gotta be deep. So I'm meditating on this nonsense. I'm planning this nonsense trying to convince her to go there in the midst of us having the, the toughest time of our relationship, it happened then. And in the midst of that is where I met the Lord. So wow. yeah, yes. things changed for us drastically yes. in that season. And who the sun sets free. It's free. It's free indeed. It's free. Indeed. It's free. We, yes. thank, we thank God Absolutely. y'all seem sanctified and filled with the Holy Ghost. Yes. We do not look like gonna, what we have been through. If you didn't right. think there was a God, there yes. is a God there, right yes. there. God. Yeah, that's, yes. a, that's an evolution that, right. that an evolution. To, to move from that place in that season because mm-hmm. the person that you married is not always the person that you get sometimes. Right. right. And then... To be there and to now still be here 34 years later, uh, yeah, that, that's managing that. And uh, that's my girl, my absolute best friend on the is, planet. That is amazing. I, I, I think some, I don't, I'm not certain what we're doing with this right now, but people need to share this. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Because people need to hear that your, your, your relationship ain't half as bad as theirs. No, yeah. you can come back. And if right. God yeah. can restore this. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. God yeah. can restore your marriage too. Yeah. This, yeah. this is so good. Oh, thank yeah. thank y'all for being honest because yeah. preachers lie. Thank y'all. <laughs> thank y'all for telling yes. that story. Yeah. yeah. And and not the the, the religious story. So yeah. I'm, I'm I'm excited. I'm I'm thanking God because I, I don't know that my wife ever was planning to kill me. <laughs> I know she probably, she probably wanted, wanted to, to kill me, but I, I, I don't know if she him got to the planning times. stage. So just yeah. so grateful for what God has done. Just 23 years, and uh, when we first met, um, I wasn't really, like I wasn't, I hadn't even written Praise Is What I Do. Mm-hmm. When we first met, I was fresh out of a divorce, had no idea who I was, um, and met uh, Danielle. She was fresh out of a relationship. I was fresh out of a divorce, still in, uh, what they call uh, the friend of the court fighting for custody of my sons ah, and, yeah. Yeah, yeah. and wasn't trying to deal with no woman at that time because yeah. I thought they were all crazy. And so I just was trying to be a father to my sons and I meet uh, Danielle in Bishop Morton's office on a Sunday morning in the middle of a hurricane. Wow. wow. And that was 25 years ago. And so wow. here we sit today on a stage talking about Marriage. marriage. So, and wow. we both yes, grew up in church, um, so yeah. uh, we were always in church all of our lives, but we've gone from uh, him working at his dad's church, me in corporate America, to him. From me making $24,000 and you making $70,000 70, at the time. She made more money than you yeah. in the beginning. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, we're going to come back to that. I made, I was making $24,000. My, by the way, my son makes more money at my church than I made at my dad's church. I, many years well, later. Glory. That was a good point well, to say glory. praise the Lord. If nobody's happy. I, many many years just, later. I just want yeah. you to be grateful. Amen. <laughs> but, then, but then we 
we went from me working in corporate America, you at church, to you traveling full time and yeah. me coming home to become a stay at home mom. In a different wow. city. In a different city where there was no family. So we got married. I moved her from New Orleans to Detroit, had the two worst winters ever. Yeah. Wow. Uh, then we moved from Detroit to Atlanta. I took a job at New Birth Church and started, at the time, I had just recorded my first record as well as recorded Praises What I Do. It exploded. So two days into moving to Atlanta, I jump on a plane and start traveling. Wow. My itinerary, Bishop Long's itinerary, our job, she's in a new city with a wow. new baby. No family, Wow. a full-time career at State Farm. And I'm enjoying myself. <laughs> but everything was like falling apart in the sense of, you know, it, we just couldn't handle the constant travel and then the corporate job and the kids. So he said, one of us got to quit. One yeah. of us. <laughs> he did. He and said, one not, of us. It's not me. Yeah. Right. He Be, said. Because, and I think, I think what, we're, what, I'm, what I sense us getting to, and, and I pray yeah. that this, this is for somebody. Yeah. That in all of that activity, we were losing us. Yeah, right. That's and we saying. had to figure yeah. out a way. Okay, what can we, what can we adjust to make sure that I don't end up in divorce court again? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, just because you know we're moving around and trying, and so we made a decision by faith uh, that she was going to come off of her seventy thousand dollar a year job and be a stay at home mom slash minister. Mm -hmm. uh, because at that point, we weren't even pastoring. Right. And so, wow. uh, and let me just drop this in there. What, two weeks after we made that decision, I walk in the church, and my pastor at the time says, six, God told me. Six, about six months. Was it six months? Yeah, about okay, six about months. six months after that, I walk in the church, and my pastor says, God told me to have the church bring you an offering. It was $70,000. Wow. Wow. She wow. left a $70,000 a year job. Yeah. We obey wow. God for the yeah. sake of our relationship. And God speaks to my pastor and says, God told me to tell the church to bring you an offering. It was $70,000. Amazing. That's amazing. Awesome. So I, I've got two questions. Um, I want to, the first one is, how did you handle her making more money than you? Because there are times yeah. where the woman may make more money than the male. How did you handle that? Because a lot of people find contentious and can't get together because a man is uncomfortable with right. the female making, making more money. Um, honestly, I was, I was figuring it out, but I think because of her posture with me, it made it easier for me to accept the fact that she made three times the money I made. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, I was figuring it out. Uh, she would come and sit. At this time, they wouldn't even let her go in the courtroom. Mm -hmm. So she would come to court with me while the referee who was overseeing our case would say things to me like, when you gonna get a real job? Wow. Wow. And wow. At that time, we had custody of, we had two sons by this time, custody of them, joint custody, so we would have them 14, 15 days out of the month. They would be in our house. They wouldn't even let her come in the courtroom. So she would have to sit outside in the hallway wow. while I was in the courtroom with my son's mother uh, being emasculated. And when I would come out of the courtroom, this girl had my back. Ah. And, uh, yeah. That's how we got through that. So even though I was making $24,000, uh, I remember I had just started traveling as an itinerant minister. And at that time, I was just so grateful that people would let me come and sing and preach. I didn't even, I would just go places for free. I didn't even know that, that I should be, I should get it. You can make a life That I should be honored. Yeah. That there should be an honorarium Absolutely. attached to that. Thank God for Bishop Marvin Sapp, who was my mentor and my brother, who told me, you big dummy. <laughs> <laughs> you better get a check. You better, this, and I'll never forget the first time that he told me what to set as an honorarium. I came home and told her, ain't nobody gonna pay me that. And she said, watch and see. Ooh, and wow. the, the, the rest is history. We, we've been full-time itinerant ministry 
since we've been together and uh, God is still prospering us and blessing our ministry because of the way that this girl stood with me yes. when I was making three times less than what she was making. And I, I never, I was very careful not to say my money and I make more money than you and I can do what I want. It was ours. Um, so I think that Old that school, there ain't but one pocket in this house. <laughs> we, we were in yeah. church one time and an old mother got up and said, ain't but one pocket in this house. So I come home and say that, ain't but one pocket in this house. Just dumb. <laughs> Just, and, and so we figured out a way, even with that, yeah. we figured out a way. Uh, I set up what's called a shoe account. So I had money that, for shoes. this was the shoe account mm -hmm. where once that $50 gone, it's gone. I'm not tapping into the bill money. We had a joint account where we paid our bills from. And so it made it easier to manage that where it wasn't like, well, how much you putting in? We had one account yeah. and then we separated it that way where we didn't really have problems financially. That's and so a lot of that was because of the way that she stood with me. I, I love that. Come on, give it up. Y'all just got a good financial tip right there. Yeah. That's really good. What, what I want to talk about is it seems like during some of the course of, of, of yeah. staying together, have there been moments where one of you, like maybe Bishop Murphy said, hey, let's go this way, and Danielle, you were like, I don't agree. How did you move to the place of agreement instead of just saying, I don't agree, but I'm going with you. What did you do in those moments when, because I think a lot of times people can't stay together because they don't value the power of agreement. And even in moments where you may have felt like it's such a bad decision, like this is not a good decision, <laughs> but you valued agreement and you moved. How did you do that? Give us some nuggets about when you disagree, but yet we're gonna stay in agreement. I feel judged I right that. in this moment. But I well, we, we first had to get past that I had to tell him because I'm sharing my opinion with you and how I feel, it does, it's, not, it's not personal. I'm not coming against you. You ask me what I feel, but then when I didn't feel like you feel, you mad. Yeah, right. So I, I wanted, I had to tell him, I want to, I don't want to be afraid to express my opinion because right. you asked me what I feel and because we don't agree, it doesn't mean that I'm not gonna walk in agreement with you. Right. Yeah. Ultimately, the decision will be made and hey, I'm a team player, we gonna go with it. And I'm gonna pray the whole way that it worked. <laughs> and then if it don't work, we gonna circle back and figure out, okay, now what's the what next step? What we gonna step? do the, what's next the next time? Step? What's yeah. the next so step? What, I, what I would say is, uh, rules keep you in proper perspective. Mm -hmm. So we both are polar opposites, mm -hmm. but we both have very strong personalities. Yep. <laughs> so, so there has to be some rules or some guidelines that keep us in check when we don't see eye to eye. Mm -hmm. So that's when, that's when the head of the house becomes important. Right. And so I have no problem with my strong personality uh, putting myself under my husband because he's the head of our home. And I may not like it, Wow! but submission only matters when it's something that you don't agree upon. Yeah. So I have to, I have to be okay with good. submitting even when I don't like it. But here's the thing, I believe and trust God. Yes. So if I think he's wrong, I'm just gonna go to my dad. Trust God. Yes. So I go to I go to God and I'm like, you gotta help me get some balance because I feel like he may tear this up. Wow. And and so the thing is, I'm not gonna drag him if he tears it up. We're gonna make adjustments together. So what I've done now is I put myself in a position where I've allowed God to bless me and I've had favor on my life from stuff like that. Mm -hmm. So the guidelines is what keeps me in check, even though I feel like I got a stronger person a strong personality, but we both do. So for me, it's, it's a whole partnership. So understanding that everybody has a role, everybody has a place. So because I have the, the ultimate decision, doesn't mean I'm the smartest, doesn't mean my way is the best. When she brings something different, even if I don't like it, I bring it to God in prayer. Absolutely. So this may, this may not be something I'm comfortable with, may not be something that I initially thought of, nor really agree with. Is it my way, God? Have, have, have what, what, what I'm coming up with, have I got it out of a time with you? 
Have I got it from society? Have I got it from how I was brought up? Uh, or did I just pull it out of the air? W where does it come from? W where is our input as it relates to everything? Now I had to grow. In the beginning, that, that was not the case for me. In the beginning, if I felt like this, we just gonna do this or we just gonna fight. You know what I'm saying? So I had to evolve in that and then really respect wow. the whole partnership wow. aspect in marriage. And if I'm right, the first person to be the benefactor is my wife. Right. If I'm wrong, the person who'll be hurt the most, again, is my wife. Right. She has the most to gain by this going the right way, wow. and she understand that. So that helped me elevate her voice in my life. Wow. Helped me elevate when, when she goes against something, and, and again, it's not, it's not like she's trying to tear me down. Right. She just see it differently. We are very different. Together, we can accomplish a whole lot. But if wow. we are myopic on it, wow. there's a whole bunch that we'll, that, that we'll overlook and miss. That, that was real beneficial for me. And again, I keep partnership right at the core of it. Yeah, let, me, let me say this too. If I don't agree, I don't, I don't, lose, my, I don't lose my honor for my husband. Right. That's good. Right. That's good. So, so I, 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 I watch how I talk to him. He's a man and I always want him to be a man. Right. So wow. I look at him as my protector. Women need security. I need security, even though I feel like I can take care of myself. I know I can. Wow. So that, that shows a strength in me that I can say, I'm good, I'm not gonna drag him if I think he's wrong. So I'm always gonna give him honor. Dr. I, I was thinking about, uh, and, and I think we need to just maybe talk around this a little bit. Mm -hmm. I was thinking about this um, clip that I saw of Rihanna and her husband and her baby. Mm -hmm. And there was this whole oh, drama that. about yeah. it because the article was about Rihanna, about her performance at Super Bowl, and so she was out in front and ASAP was behind with the baby. Yeah. And there was this big blow up about the emasculation of a man. And it was crazy to me because it was like, the, it was about Rihanna, it was about yeah. her artistry, it was about her family. And so the spotlight was on her and right. it showed a strong black man who understood that there are times where I have to get behind my girl Absolutely. and support my girl. And that's not necessarily a popular concept because mm -hmm. there's this whole misconception. And not that it's not happening, because I just talked about it, the emasculation right. Right. of black men. Mm -hmm. But I think yes. we need to talk about this whole thing about being able to submit to one another. Absolutely. Yeah. Right. That there have to be times where I, I understand that maybe I don't have the best thought about this, mm -hmm. right. and she does. Right. Right. So I'll give you a good example. So my daughter just went, uh, studied abroad in Italy. I was completely against it. Mm -hmm. my, she's 19 years old. Uh, with everything that's happening in the world, you know, I'm thinking about Brittany Griner. I'm, I'm, you sure. know, I, oh, I'm, yeah. I'm, sure. I'm just, I'm just all in. Just Tripping. I ain't gonna lie. You just, worked yourself up. I'm just all in fear. Yeah. I'm in fear. Yeah. I'm in fear. That's my baby girl. Right. She, I can't jump on a plane. I can't jump in a car if something happens. But D, she had it. So I had to just step back and trust that she had enough wisdom and enough relationship with God to know that if this wasn't a good thing, that she would not allow it to happen. And so I had right. to step back and just support that even though the whole way I was like tripping about it. Yeah. Like, yeah. I'm just being completely honest that's, with that's you right. because right. I felt like, well, I'm saying no nah, and y'all saying yes, I'm the man. Mm -hmm. And, and it, it, I mean, as, a, as it stands, yeah. Uh, my daughter being in Italy was one of the best things that's happened to her in wow. her life as a as a uh, teenager. So, that's amazing. You know, but Bishop, I had I had to get behind my girl and say, okay. Yeah. yeah. As, but did you say it like that? I sure did. <laughs> I sure did. He, he, he was yes, he did. She okay. was back home and he was still pouting about her having been gone. But yeah, you all right? Did but, anybody mess with you? Yeah. I mean, just, but it, it's coming to it's it's saying if you got the better yeah. idea for the overall vision, right. I yield to that. Yeah. And right. in marriage, there has to be some yielding yeah. Yeah. that must, has to take place. She was Rihanna. It's, it's all for the good of the vision. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. And, and being the head doesn't mean that I have the best ideas. Exactly. I'm just ultimately responsible. Right. Yeah. That's, that's it. So for me, I boiled it down to that. I have a brilliant wife, an incredible wife. I was attracted to her. So why would, why would her ideas now become inferior because they're different from mine? That's good. Boy, and that's I call, good, I, James. And I call, I call him my trophy husband. 
Yeah. I call, I call him my trophy. Okay, break that down. Let's talk about that. <laughs> because, you know, because. This is a PG conversation, yeah. by the way. I, I, I'll make sure I keep it PG, PG rated. Please. But I call, I call him my trophy husband. Men have trophy wives. And so, as a woman, I, I do a lot out in public. I'm a mm -hmm. public figure. And, and you know, there were some situations that were very similar with us. Right. And so I'm okay with that, but I keep my trophy husband. Go, go, go to your professional background. So the military paid her a lot of money to consult, give ideas, and run point on stuff. Right. So her mind has been developed by a multi-billion dollar corporation. Right. Yeah. Why right. would that not benefit my house? Right. Absolutely. Right. So as, so, wow. so as my, as, when I say my trophy husband, the reason I say that is because he's fine. And okay. he supports me. <laughs> he, I mean, he takes, he yeah. takes, he takes care of your girl. Absolutely. Yeah. Ahead, and James. and I am the, I am his focal point. He keeps me first. Good deal. He always kept me first before our children. Wow. And so he has been, he has been my biggest cheerleader in anything that I've done. Wow. Yeah. So so that's why I can say that about him. And yeah. And yeah. then when and then so when I retired from corporate America. When I retired from corporate America, it was one of the biggest challenges that I had in my life because I felt like a piano in the kitchen. I didn't yeah. feel like I fit. Wow. Mm -hmm. Now, if I could say something, at that point, we had to get some help. Yeah. So yeah. she reached out to mom because she brought that corporate thing to the house. He so said she, I was trying to run him at the house. He said, yeah. you don't run them over there. You don't run me. Because you're so used to having Boom. that dialogue yeah. daily, and that was your daily conversation. Yeah. So yeah. you had to get some tools. I had to get some balance. And right. that, that's yeah. what you were talking about, about how the seasons change. Yeah, exactly. absolutely. As you age that's and the absolutely. So, so, so now did, yeah. we're, we're at the house, and for the most part, it's just us. Right. Mm -hmm. I, want, I want to talk about that. I got like Ooh. three minutes, so I need okay, you to okay, get okay, me okay, real okay. quick on this. Ooh, Empty we. nesters. Right. Love nesters. Love nesters. Yes. Yeah, yeah, we're, we're, we're love house, nesters. House, kids are grown, doing their thing. Indeed. Now mm -hmm. it's just back to you two. What did you do to make it work? Ah. And stay together. And please keep it clean. PG. What, how did you figure out how to make it work? Because there's no, the kids can be a distraction. Things right. can, everybody in the house can make you avoid you two. Right. And how did you come back together? Well, I, one, it was a, one, getting adjusted to just being in the house by yourself. Yeah. You know, the noise level was just different. Like it was quiet all yeah. the time. Quiet. And contrary to what he's showing you here, when he's at home, he's very quiet. He's quiet. A, he doesn't talk a lot. He yeah. watches television because he's, you know, so at home he's quiet. So I was a little bit nervous when Kayla left because I said, am I going to like him? Because <laughs> we never, I mean, you got to think from it's day so, one yeah. we got married, we had children. Yeah. That's true. We and, had William and Paul. Yeah, we That's had true. William and Paul. So now the children are gone and this is our first time living together by ourselves. And we're older. And we're older. And so I'm like, wow. I'm, I'm not sure we're going to like each other. Yep. And it, worked, uh, it worked out, though. <laughs> <laughs> what, what did you it do? Did you, did you all start dating again? What did you do? Or did you have to sit down and say, okay, let's define what this looks like now? What are, what's one thing that you did intentionally to make that new season work? You, you, yeah, you know, I was going to say the same thing. For the first time ever, we could do whatever, whatever we, we want. So we, I was like, this is the best thing ever. I was like, hey, let's go to Chicago <laughs> tomorrow. <laughs> yeah. we, we got to call nobody. We ain't got to ask nobody. And for us, I think that was a healing adjustment yeah. uh -huh. that we didn't even kind of, I'm, I'm, on, I'm out here. That was a healing adjustment for us that I don't even think we realized we needed. Just the spontaneity That's of good. being able to say, That's hey, good. let's go to lunch. Hey, let's go to the movies. Like, not having to ask nobody, check nobody's schedule, that was healing for us. Yeah. And even though it was a, an adjustment in a new season, I think it was exactly what yeah. we needed. It, it, it worked out for us. New house, yeah. new season. Yeah. And I'll uh, leave it at that. Please, thank you. <laughs> thank you, Jesus. Yeah. Hey, you kept it to you. Yeah. All right, it. come Read on. Read between the lines. Yeah, because I got some stuff I'll just leave out. Please yeah. leave it. Yes. But, but we, we really kind of planned ours out because it all wow. kind of happened around.
around that same time where I retired from the federal government. Right. Wow. And so um, it was around our 30th wedding anniversary. Welcome, so, so what we did, we were trying to decide what are we going to do? So what we said is, you know what? We could do our, we could renew our vows or whatever, but why are we going to spend money on everybody else? Because if we renew our vows, that's money for everybody else. Yeah. Let's do something for us. So we wow. said if there were two places we could go, and some of y'all can remember we had these conversations. If there are two places we could go, let's pick two places. You pick a place, I pick a place. He picked Cairo, Egypt, and I picked Morocco. Wow. And that's what we did. And from there, it's been on, baby. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you see. Place, I pick a place. So it seems like you brought some planning, but spontaneity, adventure, mm -hmm. and reconnected in various yes. ways, whether it was through travel, yes. whether it was through yes. let's go here. But you decided really in every season, and we could capsulize it, that you were going to live again and enjoy being together. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And make yeah. whatever adjustments were necessary yeah. right. for, for right. who she is, for who I am, for who we are. Absolutely. Absolutely. And yeah. giving each other permission to change and evolve together. Wow. I love that. Yeah. Yeah. That's it. Can you give it up for both of our couples? Give it up for the Whites and the wow. Murphys. Thank you for your transparency this morning. Thank you for, for sharing with us. So you can make it and navigate through some tough seasons, but you got to be remembered to do it together. Y'all give it up for Pastor B who's coming forward. great such transparency so good I really enjoyed that uh, give him another big hand clap and give Dr. Iyer a big hand clap for the asking the right questions that was amazing well those of you who are watching online I just want to encourage you if you're watching for the first time today and you haven't registered make sure you register you can text FFC 23 to 71441 so that you can get registered for the conference and why do you need to register you need to register because when you register you get apostles worksheets and then you also get a self-esteem kit in the next coming days it'll be sent to you so that you can have the information so that you can um, build your self-esteem have all of the tools that you need so that you can grow and develop in your self-esteem as well hey man those of you who are in-house, in of course, you can purchase items and products uh, in the front lobby immediately after service. There'll be products there. There'll be grab bags there. You can get those items uh, in the front lobby as well. Remember to make sure you register for the Uptick uh, Virtual Youth Leadership Conference. Those of you who are youth pastors, youth leaders, want to encourage you to be a part of that. And then, of course, the Wealth Building Faith Experience is also available as well. I am excited excited to hear part was this, this part three of apostle from the mornings well yeah part four part four yeah it is part four part four from the apostle this morning how many of you all excited to hear it all right well would you stand and give the apostle a big hand clap as he comes for his teaching moment this morning Good morning. How's everybody? Can we give the Murphys, the Whites, Dr. I a big hand clap for that? I think it was it's amazing because you get a chance to hear real life stuff that happens. And um, when uh, you may be seated, you may be seated. I know when I first heard the White story, it, it was really comical. Uh, but they were serious about trying to kill each other. Yeah. Amen. And uh, you'd have to know James to you know he's a gangster. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, just straight up gangster. Straight up. And uh, yeah. his mind has been renewed. Thank you, yes, Jesus. Yes, yes, amen. <laughs> amen, amen. And she was trying to poison him. So part that y'all didn't hear was when he would eat, he'd give it to the baby first. <laughs> Because he knew 
and follow me. So he understand. He's straight up gangster. He understand. She out for me, and I'm I'm out for her. But to see how God has blended them together now is amazing. It's totally amazing, and so uh, we love them. And uh, you know, we've had the opportunity with some of our children, spiritual children, to travel with them and uh, to go places with them, and we've always enjoyed them. We have so much fun uh, together with him. He said, well, how do I do that? It's just kind of something God has to put together. Uh, my whole closeness with Dr. Price was never something that I planned, Apostle Price. And I told y'all when I say I'm doctor, I'm not trying to in, in any way uh, dishonor him, but <clears throat> it was something we never planned. In fact, we would go to the meetings and we would just, you know, sit in the back or sit wherever we were set. And then one day he said, hey, listen, tell that, tell that guy from Houston, come on, we're going to have lunch with him too. And uh, from there it just started. So, um, so many of you, I, you know, I may never have a close, close relationship with, but that doesn't mean you can't glean and get what you really need. And that's what you have to understand. Don't make that a criteria. Amen. You got it? Don't make that a criteria. Uh, so... Um, and get the most out of relation. One of my sons who is not a pastor and who's, uh, he came to me and at that time I'm just ministering to pastors. And he said, will you be my mentor? He's a businessman. I said, no, I can't. I can't do it because I could, I wasn't going to make a commitment I couldn't feel fulfilled. Mm -hmm. Well, he would just come to the meeting and sit in the back, take his notes. And today he's a multi-millionaire. Yeah. And he'll tell you, and he'll tell everybody, I'm teaching what he taught me. I went to one of his meetings and uh, he had about 3,000 people there. Yes. And he's teaching what, some of us are, he's teaching that. And he said, my mentor is here. And he says, uh, uh, Apostle Hill is here. And boy, the people went, wow. I mean, this is when, when, wow. I mean, because he, he, everywhere he goes, he tells them, I got this from Apostle. Uh, but we never had a close relationship all the years. Now we've grown closer here lately, but it was never. But see, he didn't make that criteria. Yeah, that's good. That's good. And that's the thing. Don't become jealous of a relationship. Yeah, that's good. You follow me? Yeah. You see that, well, how come I get, no, just, if, if it's to be, God will do it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, it, yeah. God will do it. But that doesn't mean you cannot glean what you need. I want to applaud also um, um, those of you who could have had a legitimate excuse for not coming. Yeah. So your school, and where's Doug? Doug's here. I saw Doug. That's Doug, and there's the uh, uh, the Murphys. They're in school. Somebody else maybe, but I don't know. And uh, even though you know they had class, I mean Doug had to sit in the parking lot to get one of his classes, uh, so he would be here, get the class, and then get in church. And the Murphys, you know, that after their class was over, boom, they jumped in the car and came. Well, you know, I really appreciate that faithfulness. And I just want to applaud you all for that. I really do. I want to applaud you all for that. Also want to applaud many of you who have, uh, you know, you went through your rough season. You know, you went through your rough season with your marriage. You know, you burned the phone up got it either by way of calling the secretary and was calling you back you know went through all of that and then you got your victory and you're still with us no and that's you know it's kind of like your members and, uh, you know, we want everybody to share this, of course. But, uh, but pastors, when you remember, you spent time with them, you sold into their lives. I'm not just talking about, you know, physically, as long as I, I, you know, material. But, but you sold spiritually in their lives. You helped them, you talked to them the word. And then they get to a certain point, and then you look for them like, huh? Huh? And, uh, but it's refreshing when you see those members who came, they stuck with you, they still with you. And many times we will overlook them because we are so focused on those who were not faithful. I just want to celebrate all the faithful today. Amen. I, I was, we, we, were in, 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 we were in prayer the other day when we had our prayer service and uh, the Lord spoke to me while Latrice was praying. 
because I've kind of always kind of stayed away from marriage teaching. Not marriage teaching, but you know, I got a lot of stuff on marriage. Right. God's blessed me a lot, but I just I never had a joy of teaching marriage. Uh-huh. And really because of the frustration of you tell them what to do, they're not gonna do it. <laughs> you're you're wasting my time. You know, I, I done told you all this, and then you just go and do what you're going to do anyway. And so I just say no. But I was talking, and the Lord said to me, because um, first question I asked Apostle Price was, how do I get my marriage straight? How do I get my home straight? And he said, there are still men like you searching for the answer to put their marriage together. I said, wow. And he said, and I'm holding you accountable. <laughs> so I don't know what we're going to do. May not be this year. Maybe next year. I'm going to do something. But it's, it's I want the men to lead their families or their wives into it. I don't want the wife dragging the man. But I'm looking for that man who says, I want to be a man of God. I want to lead my family. I want to lead my marriage into better. You follow me? Yeah. And that's, that's what I'm looking for. I'm looking for that man who was Ivy Hilliard years ago, 19, had to be, what, 83, when I was asking him how to do it. Amen. Praise the Lord. So I just threw it out in the atmosphere so I could, you know, I'm throwing it out because now when I throw that thing out there, you know, uh, <laughs> it's out there working right now. Praise the Lord. Uh, if you have not registered, please register for your self-esteem a kit. I'll be putting, I'll finish putting it together. I'm already have, have a lot of it put together and it'll be uh, sent to you and we're gonna make a bit, big fanfare when we send it out simply because we want everybody to get, I am not charging for it. It is not a product I'm trying to sell, but it is an assignment I'm fulfilling because the deficit in most people is the low self-esteem. And, and uh, I believe, I know that's my assignment. The final thing I want to say uh, to you is, uh, <laughs> I, I want, uh, you know, Dr. I talked about the uh, April uh, She Rose League uh, a conference, and uh, I, I want you to pray about being a part of it. You know, Lady B passed that baton on to her with this uh, ministry to women, and uh, several years, of course, you know, they kind of did it together, but she's doing it on her own, and I'm just asking you to just, uh, and just participate. Here is why. Because our corporate voice is louder, speaks louder than our individual voices. Yes, many of you have your women's meetings and your women's conferences, but to have a solid word conference coming from a word-based ministry is not something that you see all over the, all over the uh, globe from a mega ministry standpoint. Amen? Well, this is the fourth one, so praise the Lord, I'm going to be through. <laughs> but thanks be to God, which giveth us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore, my beloved brethren, be ye steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, for as much as you know that your labor is not in vain. Everybody say, do the work, do the work. All right, now, so what we've, uh, uh, what we've, uh, done thus far, we've equipped you with what it takes to change behavior. I believe that's important to know because what I'm about to give you today is going to be like a blueprint, a roadmap, things that you're going to uh, say, okay, I'm going to do this. And you probably want to take out your, your camera so you can take it well, when we put them on the stage and look at them and see how you can be a part of implementing them. We see a family in uh, <clears throat> in First Kings, uh, I think it's chapter, it's First Kings four, when the widow comes to the prophet because she's in debt, husband died, left her in debt, and the uh, the bondsmen are about to come and take her her children. This is a family in crisis. They have an emotional issues. They have financial issues. They they have uh, all of these issues. And then what we see is the man of God gives uh, her a solution. 
And that solution is that she is to take what she has, the oil in her house. And, uh, and uh, by faith, she's pouring out the oil. It multiplies. But you, you miss, many times you miss a part of that. She got her kids involved. They work together. And in their working together, they were able to change the whole trajectory of their family. And I'm saying the same thing is possible for you. We laid out for you in the beginning all of these the incredible blessings we see that when we work together, nothing will be restrained that we imagine to do. Imagine that. Can you even put your, wrap your mind around that? That whatever, working together as a family, got it? Working together, you know, we can, be, we can nothing would be impossible for us. That's the promise. And then it's not based on our own strength. He says, my father will make it happen for you. That's awesome. Working together, he says, now your home becomes the place of commanded blessings. Yeah. That God speaks the blessing over you. Amen and amen. So what we want to do today is, I'm going to put these first little points up there. I don't know. I don't think I told them to put it up there. Um, what the woman did. She realized that her family situation was not the will of God. And that is, you have to realize that there is better. Secondly, she refused to allow the negative situation to dictate her fate. In other words, she knew that I'm not going to let this, what happened, what has happened, become, uh, you know, my tombstone. She recognized that her hope and her answers were in God. And, that, and that's the whole key. Now, I am not against therapists. Please understand that. But you don't want a therapist that takes you away from the word of God therapist as a sounding board so people feel safe when they're talk. I got a problem with, with that. But you don't want somebody bringing in a philosophy far into the scripture trying to get you to believe because that's going to confuse you. Amen. She received godly counsel and wisdom uh, that required effort. And that is the thing. When you are the only one that can fix your situation, as it were, because change is a product of human effort sustained by divine help. Then she rallied her family together as a team to deal with the distress. She rallied her family. And I know a lot of people say, well, I don't have a husband. Get your children in agreement. That faith is amazing. Because, you know, especially children who've been brought up in, in a like faith environment, they can believe. I mean, they can really believe. <laughs> uh, I have uh, one, one, uh, one of my partners, well, she's a member too, and uh, she talks about how her children um, release their faith. Because, you know, she teaches them faith, got them in a faith environment. And so they release their faith for things. And so uh, uh, for Christmas, one of her kids were releasing uh, her faith for a certain thing. And it was a big thing. And mama couldn't buy it. And uh, somebody stepped up and bought it for her. And she said, I told y'all, I told y'all, I have what I say. I like it. So I'm saying, don't play that down. What you do is you, 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 you rally them around you and y'all get in faith together. She recovered from the devastation and she reminds us, talking about the woman, a widow, the woman, widow in 2 Kings 4, she reminds us that God is committed to our deliverance, amen? Now, so here is the pathway to togetherness. Now they'll put these on. You've got a number, t number one, temper your faith. Temper your faith. Now what that is, strengthen your faith. Faith comes by, hearing by, Word of God. Number two, I trap the fox. As everybody say, trap the fox. Got identify the little things that irritate you and address them. The Song of Solomon says that. I love this passage. He says, catch all the foxes, those little foxes, uh, before they ruin the vineyard of love, for the grapevines are blossoming. Everybody say, trap the fox. Now, what my family, what our I, I, I family said, and, and this kind of, you know, it's kind of radical and uh, violent. They say, trap the fox and kill him. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> kill the fox. Everybody say, kill the fox. Kill him. Yeah, don't just trap him because, you know, he, he may get loose. Yeah. Kill him. All right. Next thing, train your focus. Everybody say, train your focus. Now, what you focus on will magnify, thus minimize other things. 
So with our focus, if I'm focusing on the right thing, focus is this governing belief of values that shape one's priority and motive and thinking and behavior. So I can control what I choose to focus on. Now you can focus on those things that irritate you from your mate or from your children or whatever and let that blossom all out of control. Or you can focus on the good things and the good values that they have. The devil, he majors in distorting your focus, getting you to focus on the wrong thing. Happens in our church. Everything is going well, follow me? But um, <clears throat> the carpet, one little piece of the carpet has been torn and they haven't repaired it. I don't know what they're doing with the money. Why? You focus on one little piece of carpet. You follow, follow me? Your focus is skewed. It's off. All right? So we want to change our focus because it's going to help us. A distorted focus causes what, uh, what uh, yeah, uh, causes uh, misguided expectations. It causes uh, the uh, irreconcilable differences. And I don't know, you know, this thing that came up. <laughs> It's only, it's only reconcilable because you don't want to reconcile. Exactly. Right, right. You don't want to deal with it. That's the only reason. Oh, uh, you know, I tell everybody, Lady B and I are so opposite. Food I like, she don't like. Got it? You know, she's, she's more polished. She like plays and all that. I can't stand her. I can't stand her. You understand? Know they want to go to New York and Broadway and all that. Oh. oh. And I, I thank God I got some sons and daughters who like that. Y'all yeah. <laughs> want to hear something funny? I don't know what's it for birthday. Anyway, we go to New York and um, they want to go to this, what was it called? Hamilton. See, some of y'all went, wow. <laughs> so, you know, I'm, 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 I'm going to do this. I'm going to do this. I'm going to go there. I'm going to do this. And uh, first of all, I can't stand musicals. If you're going, if you're going to say this stuff, don't try to sing it. I don't want you doing both. Don't do both. So anyway, I'm, I'm, I'm toughing it out. I'm toughing it out. They had in a mission. When they had an admission, I had another son with me, and uh, he and I had that look at each other. I said, I think what we'll do is we're going to leave, and then we'll meet him at the restaurant later. Well, good. He who the son set free is free. <laughs> <laughs> okay, but, 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 but that doesn't mean we, we can't have a good time. Lady B and I, we're different, you know, we are. But we learned how to enjoy our differences. I can't stand shopping. But right now, praise God for Amazon and all other online shopping stuff. She don't have to go to the mall, so, so, so uh, you know, she get that glitter in her eye when talking about, let's go think of going to the mall. And then she look at me and she get that. He ain't, he ain't buying it today. We will go out of, out of the country and that sort of thing. Um, uh, I don't want to walk around by myself, so I go. I have grace for that. And then when the grace is waning, <laughs> amen, praise the Lord. So I love when we go with our, our spiritual children or our children because they want to go shopping. They can go shopping. Leave me in the hotel. I'm fine. I really am. I'm, I'm serious. Yeah. And, uh, uh, yeah, praise the Lord. So, so, my focus, my focus is distorted. Uh, focus, uh, distorted focus causes misplaced priorities, imbalanced living, and erroneous justifications. Now, I could get deep into that, but I'm going to let the Holy Spirit deal with you on that. Because I've got the wrong focus, i got the wrong priority. Now we have priorities, our life is out of balance. And then I start to justify things because of my distorted focus. All right? It's the major weapon of the enemy. Amen. It's one of the major weapons of the enemy. The prodigal son, he lost focus. 
and uh, he wanted to do something that was totally outside of God's plan for his life as a model. All right. Then there must be timely forgiveness, timely forgiveness. Now, and we must master, we talking about in family, a family that's looking toward um, working together. We must master timely forgiveness. In other words, we're not going to allow resentment to come in. We're not going to allow offense to take place. We're going to master timely forgiveness. And then we're going to track our faithfulness. And that is we're going to become accountable to God. Everybody say accountable to God. Accountable to God and accountable to, other, to, to each other. Uh, my, if I said I'm going to do something, I'm going to follow through. If I said I'm going to do something, I'm going to follow through. If it's not possible for me to follow through, I'm not going to act like I didn't say it. I owe others an apology. I owe others a reason. Not an excuse, but I owe that. When that's established, now I will know within our group, our covenant group, I know that I can count on what you say. I know I can count on what you say. And then that must be time for your fun. It ought to be fun. And so you have to make, you have to make that happen. I'm going to talk to you about that a little later. But uh, living requires fun and celebration, and you have to schedule time for it. Even as the family grows, you have to do that. We schedule time for fun. Yeah. Now, you know, Lady B and I, we don't require as much because we've traveled, praise the Lord, we travel all over the world, you know, and um, <clears throat> with Lady Bridget and birthdays. How many know that Lady Bridget loved birthdays? Yes, yeah. indeed. We call it national holiday and that sort of thing. Um, so we schedule a lot of our fun as, uh, as a family around birthdays and around our, uh, our vacation time. And, uh, and uh, we love, we've, we've, we've taken our kids on some exotic vacations. Yes. But it, and it's all fun. We have fun, 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 because I believe you got to enjoy the ride. Yeah. Right. Right. Amen. Well, I don't have no money to do all that right now. Okay. All right. I understand that. Plan for it. Pray for it. That's good. Got it. And, and within the scope of what you have. Right. Yeah. Right. Don't get jealous of somebody else who can go to Egypt. They went to Egypt. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, we got Egypt, Texas. Okay, 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 you know, I'm just joking. Over you. No, but I'm saying there is a place you can go to have fun. Right, right, right. Now, you can't stay in the, in the, in the Four Seasons right now, but they got, other, they got other nice hotels you can stay in. That's good. And if you plan ahead and watch, you can get all kinds of discounts. Everybody say, have fun. Right. Look at the person next to you and prophesy. Say, I declare, I declare. over you now. That you have fun as a family, fun in ministry. Enjoy this ride. Amen. Now let's get a little serious. Number seven is talk through your, fric your frictions. When, that, when friction takes place, that is not the time to retreat. But that's the time that we got to work this out while we want the benefits of agreement. So we're going to talk it out. All right? Now, you may have to remind yourself of the promises of it. Now, to keep you on, on point, remind yourself of the promises of, of this, of, uh, of, of being, on the, being together, this, having this unity. Keep that in the forefront. Keep that in the forefront that we want this. Amen. Be in the place of commanded blessings and watch blessings chase you down. I mean, people call you with stuff. People just want to give you stuff. God giving you amazing favor. And that is what manifests first. And you got to believe for it. Release your faith for it. Favor. God raising up others using their power, their ability, and their influence to help you. I've had pastors call me and say, hey, some members in my church got together and they, they gave us the money to go on vacation. Wow. That's good. So it's the whole point is if, if, if I will, 
if I will value it, pray for it, release my faith for it, and believe for it, it can come to pass. So I'm going to remind myself uh, of the promises of Togetherson family, and then uh, we want to become the peacemaker uh, in togetherness. Everybody say the peacemaker. Now, the peacemaker is the person who says, I am going to be the catalyst, the instrument in putting forth the effort to bring family together. I'm going to do my part. Everybody say, I'm going to do my part. Now, now this, is, this, is, this is awesome. You're going to either be a peacemaker or a troublemaker. You got to decide, and especially we're talking about, I'm talking about it within this first family group, of course, you got to decide, no, no, no. I am going to be the peacemaker. I'm going to be, I'm going to give you some things that you're going to be able to do, but I understand that God only needs one person to transform a family. That's it. That's good. Yeah. Yeah. Only one. Only one. He said, I'm the only one. Well, you're enough. Right. 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 You are enough to start the process. See, 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 enemy wants to keep you overwhelmed. You ain't never, this, 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 this. No, but you're enough. You are enough. And praise the Lord, I'm sure if uh, you are in a faith environment, you got another person coming to agreement with you. But you're enough who can start the intercession and start the peacemaking process. You are enough. And you have to convince yourself that what God looks for, he just looks for one. In Moses' family, he just one, he was one. Gideon's family, he was the one. David's family, he was the one. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. In my family, I was the one. Right. Yeah. Right. And then Lady B got on board. Yeah. And then step by step by step, it only takes one. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. So you need, to, you need to see yourself that I'm the one. Yeah. Again, you ain't getting away, man, on that. I just, amen. Amen. All right. <laughs> now, so <clears throat> uh, the Bible says, if, if it be possible, as much as life in you, live peaceably with all men. So now that lets me know that it, 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 I want to live peaceably with all men, but I may have some toxic people in my family. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And they're not for it right now. Yeah. And it's okay because it's not going to hijack my fulfillment. Yeah. You know. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called the children of God. Now, a peacemaker is a person who understands the dynamics of our spiritual authority. Remember, it is the enemy's, the adversary, the devil. It is his will to destroy the family unit, to keep us, uh, you know, uh, worried, anxious, agonized, at each other's throat, offended. That's his role. But we have authority over the devil. Amen. And now, this is where I think that uh, our, our present day believers, I think we've let that slip, that we got authority over the devil. We don't just look at what he does and watch what he does and say that's too bad. I don't know. We wrestle not against, but against Prince of Y'all know the story. And so we have to understand. He's delegated us the power. Yeah. Do they have authority? Put the, put the definition. Authority is the delegated power uh, and permission to rule, to govern, or to manage according to a predetermined plan. Authority is the right to exercise power. Spiritual authority is the right to exercise divine power. So I'm not in this by myself. Yeah. So I've got to take authority. If I say take authority. All right. All throughout the Bible, we, you know, we got, you know, the scriptures are clear. Now, those of you who have your worksheet, I got scriptures supporting all of this. Um, and the demonstration of uh, authority we see in Jesus. What amazed Jesus uh, in his ministry was the man who had authority, who understood authority. When the centurion said, no, no, you don't have to come to my house. You just speak the word. Jesus, oh, 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 oh. did y'all see that? Did you, did you, told the stop, did y'all hear that? No, the whole point is we have been given the keys. 
Matthew 16 says, I'll give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven and whatsoever you bind, declare to be improper and unlawful on earth must be what is already bound in heaven. And whatsoever you loose, declare, like, declare lawful on earth must be what is already loosed in heaven. So we have the key and the key is this authority. So Jesus exercises authority uh, and he speaks to a lot of things. I think many times we read the scripture, we read it so much we overlook it. But what did he do? He, he, he spoke to sickness and disease. Amen. Spoke to the man with the withered hand, spoke to Peter's, the fever that was attacking Peter's uh, mother-in-law, spoke to the lame man, spoke to the, the man with the palsy, spoke to the blind, spoke to evil spirits. Yeah, I mean, he, he spoke to seas, he spoke to dead, he spoke to everything. He was releasing his authority, and that's what you have to do. Now, I'm not saying you got to work yourself into an emotional frenzy to speak. You've got the authority. Right, right, right. And what has to become a part of your casual conversation is the exercise of your authority over the devil. In the name of Jesus, you go, I mean, I mean you know, I think, where were we? I don't know where we were. Maybe, maybe Bridget remember. We were somewhere, and um, Apostle Price sneezed. <laughs> and he said, in the name of Jesus, I took a thought over that. Just like, I mean, it just came out so quick. Yeah. And I'm in my learning phase. I'm going, oh, my God, okay. That's what you do. Yeah. He just said, let's stop it. Everybody just bowed down. He just said, no, I take a thought over that. Yeah. So is that has to become a part of your casual conversation. That when the devil raises his ugly, ugly head up, you don't have to wait. You don't have to wait till you get in prayer that night to deal with it. Deal with it right then. Oh no, give no place. Give no place to the devil. Amen. Praise the Lord. Now, uh, he, he, here is here is what we want to do. Here's what we're going to establish: this blueprint. Everybody say blueprint. blueprint. Been waiting to get to this blueprint. Uh, first part of the blueprint is what I call the cultivation factor. And then we have to learn to embrace the truth uh, that is being pushed back by the subconscious. And I do this through repetition. In other words, to do this work, you have to, you know, you have to have that repetitious word, images, and emotions so that <clears throat> the thing you desire becomes an instinctive part of you. I hope I've made that clear because I took the first three lessons to do all of that. I could have talked about this in the beginning, but I don't think it would have as much impact as now I know what to do. Because the thing that I would push back on, it is not that I don't want it, I've just been programmed to push back on it, but I know how to change it because it's the Bible. So Joshua 1 and 8, which changed my life, I mean, I'm in a little raggedy building, and I could see that I had a responsibility. When it says, and you'll make your way prosperous, yeah, yeah. I thought it was God's. I've been depending all this time for God, and I'm upset with God. God, how come you haven't done this? And how come you haven't done that? And when I read that, the light came on. Then thou shalt make thy way prosperous. God was waiting on me to invite him into my situation. And I didn't know it because I had been taught that whatever the Lord wants to do, he'll do anyhow. So I'm just sitting back waiting for the Lord. Come on, Jesus, come on. He's waiting for me to invite him. So this whole factor of I have to do the work, that's what I've been saying to you. I've got to do the work because I understand that's a responsibility that I have. Number two is the covenant factor. Now the covenant factor, they were touching on it earlier. When we, we're going to come into a covenant agreement. Now I'm, we're going to pass beyond just shaking, to holding hands. We in agreement. No, no, no. We're going to write some guidelines up for the family. We're going to write some guidelines up for how we are going to function as a family. So there's no misunderstanding. I'll know what you expect. You'll know what I expect. We're going to have it all written down. And in some cases, we're going to sign it. Boom. We have made this covenant agreement on what we are going to do. A guideline is a simple, written, practical way of implementing what God's Word says in common day-to-day -day situations so that God's plan can be understood by all. It's a point of agreement. Guidelines is a point of agreement. They may have these up there. It's a point of agreement. Where it is. Yeah. It's a point of agreement, and that is, this is what we agree to. It's a point of accountability. Now, 
I know what was, what's expected. I know I'm held accountable by what I've agreed to. It's a point of alarm. What do you mean? When a person is not doing, now we have an alarm. The alarm goes off because you did not or you stepped outside of the guidelines. And then it's a point of assessment. When, in other words, you are go we are going to be rewarded based on how we function under the guidelines. I was, now, we, we had no prior conversation, but the men you know, the whites were talking about how they had set up guidelines. And we tell everybody to set up guidelines. Right. Now, <clears throat> pushback. I don't need to set up no guidelines. Old script. Everybody say old script. Old script. Old script. Reprogram. Reprogram. Yeah, the whole point, I don't want to set up no guidelines. You tell me to set up no guidelines. Oh, come on now. Do, do, do you want to be in a place where God just commanding blessings on you? Do you want to be in that place where whatever you do prosper? Do you want to be in that place? Nothing will be restrained that you imagine to do. Yes, sir. I got you, man. So you go, okay, well, we've we never done that guideline thing, but we're going to do it now. And it's not the first time you heard it. You heard it before, but you pushed back. But now I understand, uh-uh. Yes, and... I'm going to make it happen. All right. Now, the next factor is the complementary factor. Factor, the complementary factor. But this is easy. But I got to tell you, you got to follow through. All right. Do nothing. How is it? Do nothing from fractional uh, motives through contentiousness, of strife, selfishness, for or for unworthy ends, or prompting by conceit prompted by conceal and empty arrogance. Instead, in the true spirit of humility, lowliness of mind, let each regard the others as better than, better than and superior to himself, thinking more highly of one another than you do of yourself. Now, why is that important? Let's break it down. See, if, I'm not gen if I don't genuinely affirm you and genuinely compliment you, I'm, motive I'm, I'm manipulating you. Yes, sir. Yeah. 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 See, the difference between manipulation is the pureness of heart. So, I've got to train myself to be a person who affirms others in the relationship. Okay. Affirmation communicates to others that value work through words and actions that give birth to positive, healthy self-image, self-esteem. Now, what that means is <clears throat> I've got to intentionally, intentionally compliment you. out of a pureness of heart. Yeah. Mm. And we can always yeah. find something good about people if we look. Mm -hmm. That's it. Right. Especially That's people in our family. Now, I think Terry was telling you all about how we have uh, this family tradition that uh, on, on Christmas, we all talk about, you know, they all talk about one thing and another about how they're thankful of. And then we get to the part, part where I affirm everybody. I do it. I firm I go around and talk about how proud I am of them. Da 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 da. I don't just wait for Christmas though. Yeah. Yeah. I do it on a regular basis. Mm -hmm. Tell them how smart they are. You got it. Uh, and and all of my all of my kids and grandkids they don't they don't all need it to the same degree, but they all need it. Right. You got it. Right. And at the same time, I like it. I like to, I like to be affirmed. I like to people tell me how smart I am. Yeah. Take it down. See you at the church. <laughs> now, who doesn't like it? We all like it. If I'll give it, I can receive it. But the breakdown is that I get that pushback when I want to give it. I do it later. We got it. And so it ends up later never comes. So you have to d develop the spontaneity of doing it at, the t at, the, at that time. Mm -hmm. That's good. And, and we can do that. 
And it's not flattery. It is from the heart affirmation. Yeah. Are y'all getting this? Because yeah. I'm not trying to manipulate you. What I am doing intentionally, I want to build your self-esteem. I want to build you. I want to let you know how bad. I want to let you know that, you know, uh, you are valuable and I have not yes, overlooked indeed. you. Yes, yes indeed. Yeah. And we can do this. Now, okay, how am I, I going to do it? First of all, I got to start telling myself that I'm going to do it. Yeah. Yeah. By the grace of God. Because I, well, I'm so grateful by the grace of God that I'm very sensitive to people around me and that I am, not I will. Will is not faith. Faith is now. The communication with the subconscious is a right now thing. Right now. And uh, I am complimenting and I'm affirming all of those who are around me who are part of my team. I'm doing it. We call those things that. As I'm saying, so, so I'm speaking that language now to I am now reprogramming my, boy, this is so good. Yeah, because uh, <laughs> yeah, nobody tells you how to do it. Yeah. They just preach it and tell it to you, and then we, you know, we sh shout in us, and you go home and go, okay, and the subconscious go, <laughs> I ain't doing that. <laughs> so, 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 so this is what we do. We do it, and repetition, and then it will come instinctive to you. You start complimenting people. You start complimenting. Oh, that looks very nice. You got it? Oh, your hair looks wonderful. Now, I mean, see, we really have to do it because we think it. We just don't follow through. Can I get an amen from brothers amen. who see, who love their wives and their wives have and then we think it. But because the subconscious has not been trained that this is important, we put it off and we don't say it. And then the devil shows up, shoots the fire and daughter at your wife. You change your hair, he didn't even notice. Yeah. Come on. Yeah, that's good. Yeah. He didn't even notice. And God forbid you tell somebody else, oh, you changed the color of your hair. The devil's, <laughs> you see that? So I'm saying, we have to learn to do it. Now, and in doing so, we began to program our children's so that they will begin to do it as well. Mm -hmm. And we change the whole atmosphere. Right. Are y'all getting me? Y'all with me? Yeah. Okay. Affirmation does not exempt one from correction, though. In other words, just because I've affirmed you doesn't mean that you can't won't be corrected. Uh, next one. Affirmation uh, can correct uh, affection imbalance, and I do it on purpose. You follow me? If you see a person, you know, uh, uh, I told y'all about the story about the preacher who would play his, his, his CD on the way home from yeah. church because he wanted his wife to affirm him, yeah. compliment him. And she turned it off because she said, I just hurt you. <laughs> he was having all kinds of emotional issues on that, you understand? Because he was playing it because he wanted her to say, Good message. Right. You got it? <laughs> and uh, so I just told him, listen, you just need to tell her that's what you want. And, uh, and, and she will begin to accommodate you. Amen and amen. All right. Words communicate value, honor, and importance. Uh, thank you. Uh, you are so. All of those are ways to do this. You know, thank you. You're so beautiful. You know, I love you more. Uh, uh, all, all kinds of things. You know, Lady Breeze has been fly this week, haven't she? Oh, yeah. I mean, she has been. I'm telling you. Yeah. And uh, each day she has stepped out. You know, we have, we have, we have uh, my closet over here. Her closet is over there. Her boutique is over there. <laughs> so when she steps out, I went, oh, wow. Yeah. yeah, and so uh, right. I'm going, this is true. I've been looking, she's been doing it every day this week. Amen. Um, and then, you know, she did a little something to her hat. I said, ah, oh, <laughs> yeah. So I'm saying, the whole point is we got to start doing it. Right. Yeah. Amen and amen. All right. Actions that communicate, we affirm with actions that communicate uh, appreciation and value, doing the out of the ordinary. 
Now, I got running bath water. Most people don't take bath, they take showers. All right? Bragging on someone, encouraging, uh, encouraging uh, based on potential, all right? Uh, that they are able to do stuff, all right? Now, can, can I get some other, other things? Yes. I'm gonna talk about out of the order, keep it clean. Praise the Lord. Out of the order, I'm about two or three. Uh, out, of, out of the ordinary thing you can do to make a person feel special. Mm -hmm. He said, open the doors. Open the door for him. Carrying a bag. Carrying a bag. Holding hands. Holding hands. Writing a note. Ladies, when y'all, I thought, well, this is your opportunity to give advice to everybody else, including, okay. Turn on her curling iron in the morning. Yes. Yes, ma'am. I can't hear you, Nicole. Oh, Nicole Green Fan Club, how can I help you? <laughs> Somebody else. Yes, ma'am. I don't want to tell you, bring him his plate. Like, bring his plate. Bring his plate to him. Amen. Praise the Lord. Or he makes you breakfast. I'm just saying, hope he can cook. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> You know, because you know, if brother man can't cook, you know, we don't want, we don't, yeah. Then you take her to breakfast. Yeah, yeah, take her to breakfast. yeah, you take her to breakfast. All right, there you go. Take her to breakfast. Yeah, because I, you know, I don't want to start nothing because if he, if, if, if brother man can't cook and he get in there, he will sweat and he done done everything. He good and, it's, and then he bring it and you look at it and go, oh, yes, indeed. And then you don't eat it and he say, oh man, see, oh yeah. Give him no place to the devil. <laughs> somebody else, somebody else. Yes, ma'am. Prepare, Prepare his bed for him at night. Oh, that's so sweet. That is so wonderful. Amen. Anybody else? Put the gas in her car. Amen. Somebody else, somebody else. Yes. Need your preacher voice. Random just because gifts. Random just because gifts. Random just because gifts. That's nice. Yes, ma'am. Tell him what his favorite Starbucks order and tell him you appreciate how hard he works all the time. All right. Surprise him with his favorite Starbucks order and tell him how much you appreciate how hard he works all the time. Cause say again. Ladies, they need to compliment their husbands. They need to compliment their husbands. Yes, tell them how nice they look. Right? How nice they look. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. Great. Absolutely. Amen. Praise the Lord. Yes, sir. Rub her feet at night. Yeah. Rub her feet so at night. Oh my God. Yeah. Oh my God. Ooh, 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 Fly to another state for, for lunch and dinner and then fly back. Ah. Ah. 
I got to finish, y'all. You know, I got to finish. I got to finish. Oh my God, I got so much more. All right, let's get to the communication factor. Y'all want to know, I took y'all down. Yeah, communication in its simplest form is a discussion with the intent to agree. Discussion with the intent to agree. I, I got to cover this because this is to me is the meat of where we're going. We're going we're gonna to look at the, the whole idea of a conversation, and that is the meaningful verbal dialogue that sets the stage for dynamic interaction. It's a forum for the exchange of ideas, intimacy, instructions, and ideologies. Conversation must be valid, must be valued. It must be valued. Now let's put up there, uh, uh, understand the, the critical purposes of conversation. When I'm in conversation, y'all might want to take a picture of that. Uh, uh, it is a forum that involves stopping the pain. I don't know, is that on the, uh, I don't know, did I put that in the worksheet? I don't think I did. It's, it's the forum for stopping the pain, in other words, <clears throat> a person could be saying, I'm in pain. I want the pain to stop. It's a forum that involves solving problems. That's why developing this conversational platform is so important. It involves, watch this, sharing perspectives. I just want you to see what, how I'm looking at it. Conversation is, um, it involves securing partnership. I just need to know that you, we are in agreement on how we're going forward. Uh, it is the stimulation of passion. That is that pep talk that people need. Now this week, I had to, uh, this week, this week, this week, this week. Yeah, earlier this week, uh, Bridget let me know. She get, you know, she saw that, you know, I was, you know, I can say this. She saw this, I told you I was on spiritual attack earlier this week. And you know, I'm going, you know, praise the Lord. The registration was going well, but not as well as I wanted. Eventually it came up, but she told me, you know, she just, you know, she gave me a little pep talk. You know, you know, you're gonna bless so many people. They're gonna come, da 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 da. You know, she did it, and you know, I needed a pep talk. That's good. Yeah. That's good. Amen. Amen. Everybody say, everybody need a pep talk. Yeah. Every now and then. Yeah. All right. Our conversation is the. Uh, it involves suggesting of a plan. I said, I will work out a plan. We don't want to make. We want to leave anything to assumption. Uh, it is the forum that involves what? Statement of punishment or consequences. A lot of people don't like the word punishment, but when it comes um, uh, to, uh, I'll just say consequences. I could have updated that for consequences since punishment is not a, is that bad word in our, in our culture now. All right, understanding uh, the, uh, let's understand the components of a, a good positive communication. I gotta have a good safe place to talk. There must be a conscious interrupt to focus on listening attentively. Now, when you get, see, the reason people can't talk is because they talk over each other. Right, right. And they're not listening. They only listen to gain a point where they can counter what the person is saying. Yeah. So the person said, well, you always, I don't always, always, always. You, know, you didn't listen to the next part. All right. So I understand that uh, I have to interrupt that so I can be a listener. And then there's the passionately express yourself without making personal attacks. Don't make it personal. What do you mean by that? You start talking about the person's mama. Well, your mama didn't raise you right. <laughs> no, what's wrong with you? <laughs> Everybody said don't make it personal. I would be patient as the other person offers their rebuttal and their perspective. So I've got to let them out to deny a person <clears throat> the right to express themselves is to say they are of no value. All right. Now here's what, here's what, what we want to try to get into agreement now. We want to discuss possible options, insights, and solutions to bring about agreement and peace. Now the reason I want you to, uh, oh, you can take a, I hope you can take a picture of this and it's good, I should have, I should have put it in the notes. Because see, when you start developing communication, you might need this as a guideline and give it to everybody. Everybody, we're gonna talk. So everybody understand this is what we're gonna do. These are the guidelines for our, our, our time of dialogue, all right? Decide on what to do on a go forth basis. We don't wanna just leave it hanging. Now let's reach an agreement, says, and I, I, even though we did not plan it, I think today with the couples was just amazing. Because what I'm saying now, you can see in several cases, that's what they did. 
what are we going to do going for? We may not like it, you know, uh, uh, you know, uh, Murph. <coughs> Me and Murph didn't want that girl going out, to, out of the country. <laughs> mm -hmm. I don't want her going nowhere. That's my girl. But that's okay. I wasn't in the discussion. I never told Murph I didn't want it. He never asked me. I ain't, I ain't volunteer. That's family. I ain't getting into that. But they decided, and he went along with it. And it's a blessing. I can't wait to dialogue with her now about her. You know, she's far and stupid and all that kind of stuff. All right, now, but what are we going to do going forward? We don't want to just leave it hanging. We need to go forth plan. Then next and finally, do not allow the discussion to ruin your future time together. Right. Now that's where most people miss it because they carry and they harbor a resentment out of the conversation. Now you done just totally messed up because now you are mad and now you, uh, oh no, if I agree, I agree. This is what we're going for. And, you know, Dr. I, have, uh, Dr. I and I have pretty much mastered this because I, when she asks me something, I give her my opinion. I give it to her, give it to her. And so, you know, I, and then I always end with you, the pastor. Whatever you say, that's what we're going to do. And then when we go forth, I ain't going to sit when she implementing the plan. I'm going to sit in the pulpit like this. <laughs> oh, no, he, he's... When she started implementing the plan, I get up and walk out. Not walk out, but deliberately. You, know, you, can, you can walk, but you can have a deliberate walk too, you understand? Well, no, that's stupid. When we agree on a plan, we all get together on it. At the same time, you know, Dr. I, we, we're planning to do something. Dr. I said, oh, you know, hey, she, this is how she want to do it done. And oh, I said, no, I want it different. Well, you know, if, you know, if I'm the driving force in that part of the division, we say, okay, yeah. got it? And we all, everybody, nobody ever knows we had a, a, a discussion like we had over it. Nobody ever knows. Right. Right. Because we choose to stay in agreement. Oh, y'all so wonderful. <laughs> all right, <clears throat> now, so I think I can skip this next one. Y'all yeah, won't skip. I'll let you take a picture of it. Understand the consequences of poor, com poor communication. I got to just get to this last one. You know, it causes disconnection, uh, causes misunderstanding, causes party to resort to, to a surrogate. In other words, you don't talk to them, they're going to find somebody else to talk to. Causes forfeiture of the uh, blessing of agreement, causes forfeiture of corporate agreement, and resolve to solve problems. Amen and amen. Now, let's get to the celebration factor. Everybody says, time to have fun. Yeah, time to have fun. Celebration. Celebration moments. Yeah, moments in time through special words, action, gifts, and festivities, we honor and applaud those among us. Yes. And we can have, um, that we have to be conscious of the power of celebration. Amen. Prodigal son's daddy, after he came back, what did he say? Let's have a celebration. All throughout the Bible. The Bible is rich on talking about celebration. And I can have celebrations, what I call when fame moments. In point in time, what, what, I want to go too fast. Y'all, everybody take the picture together. Okay, I guess y'all have. All right. Uh, uh, it is when it's a time where I'm applauding something, of, uh, something that a person has done. Yeah, uh, and I, I can do it, you know, in a in a pr pretty much public forum. Uh, the family meeting is a point in time when I can acknowledge the other's importance. Uh, also, another celebration time can be the festive moment. That's the party. Everybody said, let's have a party. It's a time in which I appreciate with fanfare. All right? So, when I celebrate, I, t I tend to seek when I celebrate, when I'm not celebrated, I'll, I'll find somebody else to celebrate me. If I'm not celebrated, I withdraw because I think nobody seems to care for me. And when I am not celebrated, I become envious, jealous of those being celebrated. So, celebration is important. Right. Amen? Amen? Now, let's talk about have a, how to have a party. Amen. 
elements, components of a party, good party. Components of a good party. Number one, gladness. Nobody want to have no party, everybody looking sad. Yeah. Number two, guests. The right guests. Everybody say the right guests. Yeah. We want those who genuinely enjoy and applaud others to be there without envy. Don't invite haters to party to your party. Yeah. Don't invite them. Well, they're going to say, I didn't invite them. Yes, yeah, they are, but there's a reason. Amen. Then the gathering, where you're going to have the gathering, the, the, the event, the time, all of that is important in the planning. The grandeur, the magnitude and opulence of and the splendor of it speaks volumes. I don't know, did y'all come to Lady Bridges' last party? What was that? What was that, 60? Wasn't that thing awesome? I mean, that was a, and see, Dr. I've got the party grace on her. No, she got the party grace on her. She, she threw a party. She threw a party. And uh, they threw a party for the, for the church the other day. And uh, I didn't go because, you know, I ain't a party dude. They didn't want me there. They didn't want me there because they think I was going to sour the party. <laughs> Our culture now accepts more dancing than my culture did. You got it? So they didn't want me sitting there. <laughs> I wasn't the right guest. They didn't want me at the party gross. <laughs> Now, the members went wild over the party. They were posting and all that. So they had a great time. Yeah. But I was one of them guests you do not want to at the party. <laughs> all right. Uh, and I wasn't, I wasn't offended at all. No, I really wasn't offended. You know, hey, she the pastor. Yeah. All right. Yeah. And she, she throws a great party. And then there have to be goodies. Goodies is the food. You got to have good food at the party. And, uh, and then gifts. All of those are ways that we can intentionally celebrate. So the next time you get ready to have a party, that's your guide. Now here's the closing, and I'm gonna be through. And I've enjoyed y'all. Like I really have. Week. Here is your assignment and your seven steps, your seven step strategy. Daily, develop a daily regimen of listening to at least one or two hours of teaching on faith and family. This activate the laws of faith. Faith comes by hearing, hearing by the word of God. Number two, read and reread Mental Toughness, chapters seven through 10, chapters 12 through 14, chapters 15 through 17. It reinforces what I taught. Number three, set up at least three times a week for intentional meditation with vivid use of, of imagination, photos, videos. This causes believing and activates the law of attraction. See, when I do this, I am activating the universal laws of attraction. Things start happening for me, you know, when I start doing this. Number four, make daily declarations concerning your emotions, your family, and your future. I'm so grateful that by the grace of God, I am dot, dot, dot. All right? Next, <clears throat> study the successful families and the role, role others who are most like who you would like to become. This activates the power of modeling. Everybody say modeling. When I have a model, when I am an example, it's easy for me to incorporate that into my behavior. It is the order of God to teach and train us by example. Then plan specific times for affirmation and celebration for everyone in the family group. Find out what makes them feel good about themselves. All right? And then finally, be faithful in your local church, helping uh, where needed and being faithful, tithe and give up offerings to activate the spiritual laws of increase in favor. You got it? All right. Time to close. Torn between two closings as usual. 
to close with what I call the phenomena of divine appointment. Mm -hmm. Now, what is that? That is when a person was expecting one thing. God has something else in mind. Yes, sir. You follow me? Uh -huh. That's the phenomena of divine appointment. Yeah. We see it when Moses is just trying to put out a fire. <laughs> but it was an appointment for God to have a conversation with him. We see it when Gideon was just trying to thresh some wheat mm -hmm. in the cave, but it was a divine appointment. Yes, God wanted to talk to him. Yeah. We see it with Paul. Paul's on his, way to, on his way to kill some Christians, and God stops him on the Damascus Road. It was a divine appointment. We see it with David. He's just taking his brother some, some food and some supplies, but... It was the day he was to hook up with Goliath and kill him. It was a... We see it with the lunch. The, the lady is fixing the lunch for her lad. He's just thinking he's going to watch Jesus and eat his few fish and barley loaves. But it was a divine appointment for God to use him in feeding 5,000. We see it when Zac Zacchaeus was just trying to get a peek at this teacher from Galilee. He's just trying to see him, and he ends up, it was a divine appointment. Jesus stops right at the tree and says, come on, come on down, let's go home. I want to talk to you, divine appointment. We see it with the thief on the cross. He thought it was his day to die and go to hell, but he's there, and he says, <laughs> oh, he was just, he, he never knew he was going to be right next to Jesus. And he says, listen, when you could, would you just remember me? <laughs> Divine appointment. Amen, amen. So you thought you were just coming to a regular family conference. <laughs> Had no idea it would be a divine appointment where God would speak to you and say, you are enough to make the difference in your home. Yeah. And supernatural things are about to happen. A divine appointment here at New Light Church. But that's not my clothes. Yeah. <laughs> that, ain't, that, ain't, that ain't the clothes. Stand to your feet, everybody. We're going to close with a confession. Father, thank you that you have raised me up to stand in the gap for my family, to usher in your best for our lives. Your grace is sufficient for me to stand tall in faith and authority, resisting all satanic strategies to divide and to destroy my family. I call joy, love, peace, prosperity, communication, Unity, 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 happiness into our family life so that we may represent your will to others. I come against and I cancel all demonic assignments to blind the understanding of my loved ones, cause jealousy, stubbornness in the name of Jesus. So I boldly declare, I boldly declare, you are bringing believers and messages of faith into our lives to help us activate the power of togetherness and to build a loving family that abounds. Give the Lord a shout. <laughs> Father, we thank you this word has fallen on good ground and therefore it produces fruit in Jesus' name. Everybody repeat after me in just a moment. Listen. You may be watching this for the first time and uh, nobody's ever explained to you how to be born again. Jesus said <clears throat> in his word that he had come so that we might have life and have it more abundantly. And uh, throughout the scripture, we see that he's a loving God, 
But then much more we see that there is a plan whereby you can take this step into the family of God. Romans 10, 9 says that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, believe in thine heart, God raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. You don't have to confess your sins. You don't remember all of them. But confess him as Lord, saying that this day I turn my back on my own way of living. That's the kind of prayer we're going to pray, that you believe Jesus died, took care of all of your sins, and now you're ready to walk in a newness of life. No, your hands won't look new, your feet may not look new and all of that, but your heart, your spirit will come alive to God and boy, things are about to change. Repeat after me, dear God, no, without Jesus I'm lost. I believe your word. If I ask you to save me, that you will. Jesus, I believe you died for my sins and I receive you as my Lord from this day forward. Turn my back on my old way of living. Fill me with your spirit and power so I can live a life pleasing to you. Thank you, Father, for saving me, placing me in your family. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Give the Lord a shout, and you may be seated. Did y'all get blessed today? Amen, amen. All right. Um, I just want to let y'all know which, um, we are so very blessed, very blessed about everything. What I want to do is, all of it's a, all the budget's been met. Amen. Budget's been met and exceeded. And uh, not only all the budget's met and exceeded, but you know, y'all really blessed us on last night. Thank y'all so much. Um, what I want to do it today, and I want you to think about it, um, and, and do y'all have my Love City spot? I need my Love City spot on my Project 22, 23. Project 23, this. Can y'all get that ready? Huh? Yes, let me know when it's ready. And, and that's what I want everybody to do. Just want everybody just to come stay in faith with us for Project 2023. And um, you just have the opportunity, like I said, um, I had not, we had not have had a formal way of doing this. Um, and, and, and really, I'm not, I'm not going to receive an offering tonight, today. I thought I was, but Lord said no. So what I'm going to do, I just want you all to agree with me. Okay. I want you to agree with me, everybody agree with me, and that before the end of the month, because I got a goal I want to hit the end of the month, pray about doing something with Project 2023. Can I get you to do that? Yeah. Just want you to, everybody say, he just wants us to believe with it. Because when you all believe with me, things happen. All right? So, are y'all ready with Project 2023? Hello. Okay. We all ready? All right. <clears throat> um, I've asked all of, my, all of our partners and everybody to help us do something for the camp this year. All right? So if they'll play that now. Hello, we are making progress on the move to lower the 2023 summer camp session registration uh, from $299 to the $199 for our four day uh, summer camp at Love City. Now this 30% registration discount will be good until April the 30th. Now I've asked you to believe with me and to help supplement the Love City 2023 summer camp discount registration and build a bridge uh, to uh, Lake Agape and to purchase new games and we're making progress toward that goal of receiving uh, it's been estimated about $275,000 before camp begins. Now, we received a little over thus far $150,000 uh, and how excited we are. We've surpassed the love goal of uh, $150,000 and on our way to the uh, $200,000 hallelujah goal. Uh, and we want to receive it by the end of February. Yeah, by the end of February. Now, your one-time gift or your reoccurring month monthly gift as a vision investment partner will help us reach this goal. Now, as I've explained before, all Christian camps are supplemented by outside gifts and donations, and none of them operate solely on registration. Now, I need your prayer for support. I need your help. 
please give today and partner with us in reaching our goal. Now, teen groups are already registering for the June and July summer camps and at this discounted price, and it'll be good up until April the 30th. Now, make a difference with your donation. There it is at the on the bottom of the screen. Text LCP2023 to 71441 or go to lovecityusa.com. Remember, we are blessed to be a blessing. Amen. All right. I just want y'all to believe with me right now. Got it? So I'm not receiving an offering. Just believe, pray about it. And um, I had to have um, um, a couple pastors say as well that they were going to receive an offering at that church for it. Fine. We want to get it done because we, you know, we got these three camp sessions. And uh, last year it was $299. Right. This year it's, it's only $199. Who okay. does that? Who just drops the price when all the other price is going up? Yeah. I'm doing it because that's what God told me to do. He said, believe for the difference. And so uh, for what two kids could come for last time, three can come this time. Yeah. 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 That's good. So, so all I'm saying now, if we all get in faith and all understand that um, all Christian camps, all Christian camps are supported by more than just the registration. Got it. Got it. Got it? And uh, if, if all of us do a little something, like I said, we are, we are above the 150. We're above the 150. We are. And so, uh, you know, I'm just, I'm, I'm just in faith. God already knows what he's going to do. And uh, so I just want to present that to you have, you, have you think about it, and then I'll probably, you know, do something to have everybody understand. I want to do something. I I'd like to reach that goal by the end of the month. All right. I like Amen. That.